at 11.34 in the morning on this February 19th, 2011. Now, yeah, everybody's going to be celebrating the birthday on Monday of President's Day, which is Washington's birthday, and they kind of stick Lincoln in there as well. And if you so choose, they call it President's Day, so you can stick whatever other presidents you feel like celebrating on that day as well. But for me, the bigger day, the more important day, is two days after that for another birthday. It will be the birthday of my father, Philip Lefkowitz, who will be turning 74 years old on February 23rd. And so I thought, uh, what better way to celebrate that than to share it with all of you in the neighborhood, especially since my dad has been kind of a call-in guest on my show for years, especially when we were on late night on Long Island. He would call in for uh, just a chat for a little while. So we're going to do that here and now, all the way from Hewlett, Long Island. Please welcome Philip Lefkowitz. Hey, Dad, how are you? I'm fine. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear you, too. Now, you're going you're gonna to ask me or tell me something just before we, we came out of the music. What was that? Oh, uh, uh, that just that it is my uh, birthday, a biggie, and uh, it's nice to be chatting with my son. Yeah, nice to be chatting with you, too, Dad. And you are going to be 74, right, on February 23rd. You know my system. Oh, oh, tell, tell everybody your system. <laughs> well, at some point you decide that it might be better to figure your age by adding the digits instead of reading them across. So 74 becomes 11. Ooh. If you want to take it a step further, it becomes two. But that would put me on the verge of the terrible twos. Yeah, I, well, 11 is puberty. That's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you could go through that again. So I'm, I'm talking with my 11-year-old father here on Dave's Gone By. <laughs> oh, man. Um, now, let me ask you, was 70 a big hurdle? Was was was, was turning 70 years old a... Uh, you want to know something? What? I think the, the most affected I was by any birthday was turning 30. 30? Why, yeah. Why 30? I don't know. It, it's like I was leaving my youth behind, and I I was now into uh, adulthood. Hmm. And and it hit you, right? Yeah. I kind of I you know I spent the week after my thirtieth birthday. I visited a friend in Arizona, and I went to the Grand Canyon, and I had kind of a similar feeling at at that. You know that that sort of momentous moment. Um, I felt it there, although I did not leave my youth behind. Does anybody knows who knows me? <laughs> if they have to deal with you, yes. <laughs> I, I barely left my infancy behind. <laughs> well, if you ask your mother, she'll probably say that I haven't either. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. I mean, not to put a heavy point on it, but there is a second infancy involved because you are, um, you are in a wheelchair. And you have to deal with that. And, the, you know, the, these things of getting older, although they hit you actually long before you know, most people would get these kinds of things in the 80s and 90s for other reasons. But, you know, you get, you get around okay, all things well, considered. I always said I was very, very lucky mm -hmm. uh, that it's today and not 20 or 30 years ago because uh, they have the motorized wheelchairs. We have the ramp. We have things I, I, that I don't think were available to people who were disabled back in the old days. Now, any public place has to be adaptable for uh, yeah. For anything uh, that they build, chairs. anything that they build new has to have that accessibility. I know you stopped being able to go to um, one particular dentist just because he was in an old exactly. building and it wasn't up to code, but they don't have to bring it to code. Because it's an old building, so, you know. So you found another dentist, <laughs> you know? Yeah, unfortunately. So, um, what, how are you going to be celebrating your 74th birthday? Well, I imagine uh, there'll be a cake and, uh, and Bonnie and uh, probably uh, Lila and maybe Logie. Th those are who? <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's uh, Lila, uh, Bonnie's grandchildren. Oh, wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Bonnie's uh, dad's Stephanie's sister. Stephanie's daughter and Adam's daughter. Mm -hmm. Cousins. Well, cool. And uh, oh, I hope I get to see them all this uh, for this birthday. Would be nice. I don't know that that's going to be possible, but... Well, do you feel that um, 75 will be a big number, or it won't be until like 80 that you'll feel another... Yeah, 80, 80 would, if God willing I make it, well, yeah. that would be a real milestone, too. Well, yeah, well, 75 is not chicken liver, but yeah. <laughs> hey, know. don't push it. I'm not 75, I'm 74. So, well, that's what, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You got you know, another year to wait before that happens. That's, that's true. Right, right. So... Um, you know, as far as I can see, you've got a pretty good situation. You they you redid the house so that you right. can get around easily and have it cost a lot of money but worth it. You've got a ramp outside, you 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 move from upstairs to downstairs so you can live downstairs pretty much. Um and you basically live watching T V on the computer, uh on listening the computer, to yes. a lot of music. Uh Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have these um, devices to get you from one level of the house to the other. But it occurred to me mm -hmm. that sitting on a wheel, in a wheelchair on that device on the second floor, uh, I don't think I would be so secure or feel secure uh, coming down on that uh, device. If, God forbid, the uh, wheel slipped or... I don't know how it works. I don't know how they keep you in. Mm -hmm. But it always occurred to me that, you know, that could be disastrous. Well, yeah, or so, even if you're, you're stuck in the middle and you forgot your cell phone, and suddenly you have to wait until Mom comes home to, like, help you... Hey, yeah. I already had that situation. Mm -hmm. I was transferring from my uh, recliner which is a uh, motorized recliner, to the uh, wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And somehow or other, I lost my balance, and I found myself on the floor, and I couldn't get up. Mm -hmm. And Mom, of course, couldn't pick me up by herself, although I, I had to wait until she came home. And <laughs> then we called the... Uh, Fire department? Or... What'd you well, call? EMTs. Oh, yeah. And it was so funny. A man and a woman responded. Yeah. And who do you think helped me up? <laughs> was she a large lady? Yes, she was rather large. <laughs> okay. But it was funny. The man was standing there watching the whole procedure, and she actually did the lifting. <laughs> I like the which I, I didn't understand, but it worked for me. Hey, I wish marriage were like that. Let me tell you, <laughs> and the, <laughs> my marriage you know, is like we, that. What? Sorry, we have uh, neighbors across the street who are just absolutely delightful, and uh, the daughter is an EMT and volunteers, and uh, they heard my call go out when I do when I did have to call. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, any time, just call us. But it always happens so late at night. Right, well. That, you know, you, you hesitate to call. But, you know, lovely people. People yeah. really are nice. I don't care what anyone says. Or, or what I say. Because <laughs> I'm a bit of a misanthrope and always have been. No, but it's true. You a misanthrope? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so how's life on Long Island these days? Yeah, I mean, I, I I was visiting like two weeks ago, but I don't live there anymore. Well, you can tell spring is coming. Uh huh. Snow is turning green. <laughs> oh, that's right. You that snow is still there from that giant storm a couple of weeks ago. Well, not really. I mean, it's it's melted, or there's no significant accumulation left. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, because we. Um, you know, we had snow a few weeks ago, but there was a little bit left on the ground, and it's yeah, finally you're melted. in Colorado, I mean. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I felt so sorry for you when, when I heard you were going to Colorado. I said, oh, he's going to have to deal with all this snow. Go figure. 
And the irony of it. Because more than you. Oh, much. In the last two years, as a matter And we had a bad winter last year, and you still had more snow than we did last year. And not only that, we're not as well equipped to handle it as you guys are. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I, I think you, you guys are, and we're in a fairly, um, we're in a very low-taxed area here, so that... Um, well, I can't they're say equipped. That about this area, that's for sure. <laughs> exactly. So, considering how much you're paying in taxes versus how much we are, you should uh, be much, much better with the snow when we, because we're we're not that great. I mean, we're we're good on the highways, of course. Everything's like immediate. Oh but yeah. Side streets, same thing as you guys, but you guys are paying, you know, ten thousand dollars in taxes. <laughs> Somebody should be out there with like a little oh, trowel. Yeah, you're cut. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, literally, you should have elves on crawling along the gutters of, of all the streets in on Long Island, you know, with toothbrushes, and not polishing. Only that, yeah, what the the snow removal people? Of course, they can't help it, but they damage the sidewalks, the curbs, and all. Oh well, that yeah. I mean, I, I guess you can't really, and also you get and the you, divots. Yeah. How can they help it? Yeah, no, I and mean, also you get the divots of that the snow and the salt. Kind of eat away at. I mean that that's just that's winter. That is what it is. I just yeah. I just I find it so amusing that you know we moved to a place that is known for snow, and right. both winters that we've been here, including one pretty bad one, were not it's as bad as we were. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 and it just makes me grin from ear to ear. <laughs> I'm like, because I'll, I'll get you for that. <laughs> no, because I, I say this almost every week, but it's true. I, all these people, when we were leaving New York to move to Colorado, and they were saying, bring yeah, your snowshoes. I'm so sorry for you. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> How's that snow working out? <laughs> and the double irony is that we moved into like a, a townhouse kind of house where we're living now. And so into our monthly HOA uh, that we pay, the, this homeowner's whatever they call it. Oh, association? Associ yeah. I mean, part of that is when it snows, somebody else is shoveling my steps. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. You know. And they do it fast and they do it well? Yeah, yeah. They don't shovel, the, unfortunately, the full um, the street of the area, but the, the driveway and the steps, I don't have to worry about. <laughs> That's fantastic. So moving to Colorado it was the best way to get away from snow. I do not understand <laughs> this at all. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs> But then again, we are east of the Rockies here in Greeley, where you're listening to Dave's Gone By on UNC Radio. So what else is going on, Dad, who is having a birthday in a couple of days? Anything new? Well, uh, yeah. Uh, nothing really. Uh, of course, Fishy is having a birthday, too. I got him on February 23rd. Oh, Dad has a little, it's a beta, right? A beta fish? That's right. And you won't find a better fish than this one. It's, it's, um, you keep it in a little <laughs> tank. Dad used to, while I was growing up, have loads of fish tanks. In First in, in Brooklyn, in an apartment, and then in the basement. We would have regular fish, and then even for a period, saltwater fish. And it was this real big hobby of yours. But, you know, that just became untenable after a few years. But So it's kind of nice that on your birthday you got another fish again. And uh, he stays with you in the den, and you, you clean out the right. tank. Right, well... Stephanie brought him for me uh -huh. uh, the last year, and he is approaching his first birthday. Mazel tov. Are, are any plans? Are you going to have a party for the fish? Or you know? Well, I'm thinking of getting him a girl, but... <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to have a good time. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I take it mom is not home at the moment. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask... Uh, Little little bad news this week, okay? Little bad news in the news. You've heard, I'm sure, that Kenneth Mars died. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The crazy crowd. From the producers. And he was also... I love them. Yeah. I no. love them. Franz Liebkin. Can I ask, <laughs> since that movie is, is the funniest movie ever made and probably your favorite film, I would assume. Absolutely. And really mine, my, my favorite comedy, certainly. Can I ask when... Your memories of seeing the producers for the very first time, was it in the movie theater or was it on TV? I think I may have seen it at the theater. I would have been 69, I think, 68 or 69. Hmm. It might, yeah, I think 
Yeah, no, maybe it was on TV. Really? You're, you I, you didn't get to see it in the theaters. I, I was sure that you had seen it in the movies. Huh. I could have. It, it's a possibility, but you're going back, going on 50 years, so... Well, true, true. Uh, well, f- well, no, not 50, more like 40, thank you very much. <laughs> Don't make me older than I am. Um, but let me ask, uh, that first time seeing it, were you... I, yeah. became an instant fan of Zero Mostel and Gene Wilder and uh, Mel Brooks. I mean, that movie was life-changing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it had a message. <laughs> Go crazy. Pretty much, yeah. Well, yeah, which is a great message, actually, and a very liberating one. And and did you realize the first time you saw it that was it was going to be one of your favorite movies of all time well i know i came away with a, a feeling of wow that was <laughs> something special <laughs> and, and, and yeah I, it's funny the two two of my favorite movies are both mel brooks movies the uh producers uh-huh and well must young be young frankenstein, frankenstein sure oh absolutely and, and mars was in that too by the way kenneth mars was the yes, uh, percussion yes. guy? Yeah, he was the uh, burgermeister, not, uh, the the gendarme. Or, uh, yeah, in, in the, I forget what they called him in there. Right. So I'm, I'm just kind of it, it's that we we need to have more of those in in life where you see something Amen. and it's just like oh my god and it, it's it is life changing and and the well, amazing think thing think about it yeah you know that scene in the producers. Where they start to sing, uh, some springtime for Hitler and Germany, and the people get up and <laughs> a couple of people anyway, and they're incensed and they're starting to walk out, and then a few seconds later, come back, Helen. It's funny, right, right, and you know it's true. You start to get your ire up, and then you give it a <laughs> shot. And it turns out to be such a hilarious movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and the great thing about the producers is, I mean, before the era of YouTube, before cable would be repeating a movie 15 times over the course of a week, I mean, everybody uh, we know, memorized this film just in the times oh, yeah. that we were able to catch it on regular television. You know, in, in the days when there were only eight channels or something like that. We still, we still <laughs> right. knew the movie. We still knew every line of dialogue. We, we could still well, that's why it. they remade it into a uh, a new movie or a new uh, show, a, a new musical, and a new movie. They they make a movie of the musical too, which is kind yeah. of fun. So, so that's when you know you got a, a really hot property. Yeah. Can I ask what are your favorite dramatic movies? Oh, okay. Well, I still remember uh, Body and Soul with mm. John Garfield. I love that movie. Hmm, okay. And, of course, uh, one of my all-time favorites is uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Right, of course. I think that's Maybe, on everybody's uh, you know, top three list. It just is, you know. And uh, above and beyond that, I'd have to think about it. Okay. Well, cool. But yeah. But Mockingbird is probably uh, my all-time favorite drama. Good God, I am so totally your son. <laughs> it's so scary. <laughs> I am so your kid. Sorry about that, son. Yeah, no, just uh, one of those things. I mean, granted, we would not be the only people who would put To Kill a Mockingbird very high up on the list of the greatest movies ever made. But it's just funny that our two favorite films are our two favorite films. Very weird. Huh. What are some good movies well, you've seen? Oh, yeah, sorry. That scene, that scene in the courtroom where Atticus is... Uh, finished with his presentation mm-hmm. and he's walking out and the kids in the balcony yep and the old black man mm-hmm. says stand up boy your father's passing it's a hell of a moment that's a moment worth dying for. Have somebody say that to your son. Mm. 
I'm sorry, but I get very emotional well, with a, that scene. Well, I think everybody does. It's a, uh, you know, that scene and the end of the film. It just, it is uh, for me the greatest American film. It just is, and for moments like that, thank you to Horton Foote and to, um, of course, to Harper Lee, and and to Robert Mulligan, the director. They just, it was just that moment in time, and they, they yeah, did it Harper Lee really. Incredible. And still alive, but she still won't talk about the damn book. <laughs> I don't get it. She's still alive? Thank God, yeah. Yeah, she leaves a, leaves a And very she cool. won't talk about it? She, she As delivers with, something that becomes a part of the American uh, scene, and she won't talk about it? Would not for 50, whatever, 60 years now. Won't do it. Just um, Unbelievable. Well, I wonder why. I guess she went through, she didn't really want to be famous like famous famous. She wanted to have a, a, a great book and be lauded. Well, she did that. Yeah, as a literary figure, but she didn't want the trappings of family. She didn't want to answer the same questions 50 million times by the same kinds of journalists over and over. You know, all the, anything you want to know about the book is in the book, which is really not true, but, you know, that's just her way. And uh, she wanted to be a very, very private person, which... She is. She's apparently living, living in the South very quietly. She She's very active in her church, and that's about it. <laughs> you know? Well, obviously you followed her, or followed her comings and goings. Well, so well, well we, we want to, you know. And, and um, the, the last uh, DVD of To Kill a Mockingbird, where they did a special anniversary edition, they had a whole documentary that was longer than the film, you know. And they interviewed... <laughs> Living people, and I were able to get, of course, um, Scout. And Scout is out there. Um, well, you know, as well she should be. Whenever they have a screening or something like that, uh, a lot of times they'll get her to show up and talk and, and whatever, which is great. Yeah. Well, Gregory Peck was unbelievable in that part. I mean, he was Atticus Finch. Oh, my God, yeah. I mean, it was just it was a perfect, it was, a, it was an amazing, amazing film. Have you seen any good movies lately? Oh, I mean, on you know, on DVD or on TV, on cable. I had nothing special, nothing that's really blown me away. Well, nothing compared to, to Kill a Mockingbird, certainly, but nothing really uh, sticking in your no. mind. Right? Hundred and fifty dollars a month for cable television, and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Your mother's got me reading the Patterson books. Oh, okay. How are those? Oh, they're they're fine. He, he's an excellent writer. Oh, good. Okay, but yeah. Uh, I'd rather see a good uh, movie that ties it all up in uh, an hour and a half <laughs> <laughs> rather than have to sift through it. And then, of course, he tries to give you a surprise ending and then a, a second ending. It's, he's a good writer. He's a great writer. Uh -huh. I mean, he's, uh, he's obviously selling a lot of books. And I notice what he does. He, he uh, his new books are all done with a co-author. So oh. he's giving these new ones a chance. That's pretty neat. Or either that, or they're writing most of the book, and he's just putting his name on it. I don't uh, think so. I don't think so. I think his input is uh, at least half the battle, because I recognize his hand. But uh, great stuff. Oh, cool. Well, fun. Fun stuff, if you can call murder mysteries and uh, fun. Well, they're they're so popular on television. There, there's obviously fun to me. Well, I watch them. Joyce watches them. My wife. So, you know, um, yeah, they are fun it's, in their way. Yeah, when the bad guys. It's talk. amazing how much of television now is devoted to cop shows and uh, mystery shows, and they really have come around. It used to be big on uh, bigger on comedy than on this sort of thing, but I think now is the mystery uh, murder type show. Right, and the investigation I shows, and, and th along with reality TV, yeah. That, that, and it'll cycle back at some point, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless, like NCIS, yeah. I think, is the most popular. Yeah, it is now. For a while, CSI was big, but yeah, they've had a run for quite a few years, probably because Cable stole the thunder of comedy. Because, you know, the funniest people could go to cable and, and be much more um, uncensored oh, yeah. and open. 
uh, maybe use the, use the kind of language that they like that they feel comfortable with. Yeah, and treat subject matter. But, of, yeah, yeah. You remember the story about Lenny Bruce when I got his autograph? Yeah, remind me, remind our listeners. Yeah. Okay, I, I was walking by the uh, courthouse when he was on trial for obscenity, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, "Excuse me, aren't you Lenny Bruce?" He was with his lawyer, and mm -hmm. he says, "Yes, yes." I said, "Oh, I, I, you're, I, I, it's a blast, your stuff." And he says, uh, "I said, can I get your autograph?" He said, "Oh, yeah." I said, uh, "How's it going?" And he says, "They're trying to railroad me." Oh, well, yeah. I said, uh, "Can I get your autograph?" He says, "Okay." He takes a pen, and he says, "What should I write?" And then he thinks for a second, and he says, Tempo. "How about F you?" <laughs> Lenny Bruce, <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, 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 and his, his lawyer goes, no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame, though. <laughs> that would have been a beautiful, no, beautiful you know, thing. That would, oh, my God, that would have been the prize of my collection. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, well, yeah, but, you know, if, if you he had lived another couple of years, or cable would have been around... Um, he could have done anything he wanted. He would have been shocked by South Park. You know? That's the thing. <laughs> he would have seen things on TV. Lenny Bruce would be watching cable television and go, oh, oh no, they're going too far. That's just bad taste. <laughs> Where's my heroin? I can't watch this without heroin, you know? Uh, well, you, you know who played his wife? Harlow? Honey Harlow? Who? Um... Oh, was it not Valerie in, Perrine? She was in Superman. Valerie Perrine. Yeah, in what was it? The movie Lenny with with uh, Dustin Hoffman. Right. Yeah, um, she she didn't play his wife in real life. She she was in in the. Uh, I haven't seen that movie. Yet. It was a Bob Fosse movie, and I don't know if it's been out on DVD or whatever. But I, I should see that again. It's been many 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 years. Anywho, uh, he was quite a character. Well, yeah, and so are you, my beloved father. Happy birthday, Dad. Thanks again. Wonderful, wonderful to talk to you. Wishing you many, many more. Love to Mom, of course, too. Say hi to her, please. Uh, her. Who's that? Oh, you know, the woman you live with. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Brian, if you get to listen to this. <laughs> and what is it? You've been, you guys, have, you haven't hit your 50th yet. When is your no, 50th? yet. Well, no, that's, that's not that far away. When is that? No, that would be in 2012, God willing. Well, that's next year, dude. Yeah. I mean, you know, you make it sound, oh, no, oh, that's far away. Nah, I don't have to think about that. That's next year. <laughs> hey, you know, from year to year, you got you to hope you're still going to be around. Uh, I'll have I. I'll have, well, do something, you know, plan something cool and, and special, and hopefully I can, let's see, it'll be, when is her anniversary? Is it April something or June? No, April. March. March what? Oops. Sorry. 18. March 18th. So hopefully maybe I, you know, if I can get out to New York during that particular period. I mean, come on. 50th anniversary? That's pretty... Yeah, I think that calls for the deli or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't do pizza on that night. We want pickles. We, we need pickles and potato salad for a 50th anniversary. You know, where are you yeah, going? I'd, say, I'd spare no expense. <laughs> you got. You should splurge for egg rolls that night. <laughs> okay. Seriously, yeah. That's I, I, an idea. Kosher <laughs> <I'm laughs> Chinese. Oh, well, no, the local deli that you, you know you guys use sometimes has egg roll. But, but I mean, or, or no, no, no. There's a kosher Chinese. Uh, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Kosher Chinese. Do it up yeah. right. Yeah. And oh, they got good stuff too. And, and a party hat. Or two, really, a really. Party make, hat. Put on, yeah, everybody puts on little party hats because for 50th anniversary you should do something <laughs> really, really meaningful and special. You know? <laughs> if you say so. G give mom an extra pack of gum or you know something, something really, you know, something that makes her feel valued. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What more can I do? I mean, listen to this. Yeah. On special days, I make your mother's breakfast. Whoa. Whoa, stop the presses. Uh, 
I don't know why they don't give you a medal. That's just you make mom's breakfast. This is a. Uh, so, now, so, what is your mother's breakfast? Every everybody <laughs> for the last I don't know how many years. Tell the world. Is everybody ready? Drum roll. It's a devil dog and coffee. And I go to all the trouble of preparing it for her. In other <laughs> words, I take the cellophane off the, the devil dog and I warm up her coffee. <laughs> I mean, you, you take the, 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 devil, the devil dog out of the cellophane wrapper. You do this for her. For her. Not all men would do that. <laughs> Some men, they would just open the box, they would toss the devil dog on the table. You understand, huh? You understand my... my but my, my father, at least once a month, goes through the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the cellophane wrapper of a devil dog to put it on my mother's plate delicately and makes coffee. Well, wait a minute, you said once a month. Actually... Traditionally, it's, it's once a year, but I do it more <laughs> often than that, actually. Now, Dad, you're spoiling her. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she'll get uppity. <laughs> she'll start demanding, you know, she'll demand a ring-ding one of these days, and you, know, you won't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> she might ask I can't even tea. have it in the house. What are you talking about? She'll demand ring dings. She, I love a ring ding. Oh, yeah. Well, no, actually, one day she might ask you to make tea, and you won't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean boil the water? How do you boil the water? It's a, an old Polish recipe. They lost it. They have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry to our Polish. Not Polish. Uh, well, actually, we kind of are. Partially. Yeah, well, it depends on which week you were there. Yeah, right. Well, it was Poland, it was, it was Russia. There, sometimes it was Russia, it, it was Poland, it probably was German at one point. Well, well, yeah. And I know I have some Hungarian in me, which, you know, <laughs> there's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> I'm not going up there. <laughs> that sounds ghoulish. I, oh, oh, goulash, I get it. Oh, thank you, Dad. <laughs> Sorry about that. <sighs> on that note... Ladies and gentlemen, it is 12.06 in the afternoon here in Greeley, Colorado. It's 2.06 in the afternoon in New York, Long Island, New York, where I've been talking with my beloved father, Philip Lefkowitz. Happy birthday. Happy 74th birthday on Thank you. Uh, Thank you. the 23rd. I think that's Thursday, right? Mm-hmm. Mazel tov, Dad. Many, you know, and, and of course, more than anything else, more than longevity, just the health. Just feel Amen. good. You know, have have good health and love in your life. That's uh, that's all you need. Well, we're trying. So, give my love to everybody, all the family and mom, and um, you know, most most happy birthday, many happy returns. Love you, Dad. Love you. Have a good one. Bye.